So hello and welcome to the video and today I'm going to talk about Lego. Yes, I know it's a little bit off topic, which is why I'll release this video as a midweek bonus video and the normal aviation content will return on Sunday. Now I watch a fair bit of YouTube stuff when I'm not making my own videos and recently Lego content has popped up increasingly frequently on my feed. Indeed, two creators that I've followed for years have recently independently started their own Lego channel. So Tony from La Vida Loca, who makes excellent cruise content, has recently set up Loca Bricks. And Kevin Chapman, who makes excellent football manager content that I've watched for years, has recently set up a channel called Block Party, which is a great name for a Lego channel. So a lot of the content you'll find out there focuses on actually building Lego and that probably comes from the fact that a couple of years ago Lego widened its strategy somewhat and started making kits specifically designed for adults to build. But a lot of the content out there also focuses on investing, yes, investing in Lego. Now each Lego set is only made for a limited period of time. And when those sets reach the end of their lives and are retired, there can still be quite a significant demand for them. Which according to the natural rules of economics means that the price rises. So anyone who's been able to squirrel away a set when it was available is able to sell it at a higher price to satisfy that demand. And believe it or not, there are channels out there which focus on going through the sets that are shortly to be retired to determine which ones are the best ones to invest in. And some people are then buying up those sets, whacking them in a storage unit for two to three years, with the apparently realistic ambition of doubling their money over that period. Others buy two sets. They build one, they put the other one away, and in a couple of years they get their money back from selling the second unbuilt set. Now it's been really interesting to explore this whole new world of adult Lego and I used to play with it when I was a kid so I started getting a really serious itch to buy and build something myself. And I've also been getting a bit bored of my backdrop. There's a shelf just over there that looks eminently suitable for displaying something. So I started idly looking online and the first set I saw that I think would work really really well was the Sydney Opera House. I used to live in Sydney and I think this is a really, really cool looking set. But when I looked closer, I realised that this set was actually only available between 2013 and 2016 and so has been retired now for eight years. It cost £250 when new and after eight years you can pick it up for £415. Not quite double the original price, but a 6.5% annual growth in value over that eight year period is better than a lot of investments have done in that time. Although another Lego website tells me that this set actually achieved that value of 415, 425 quid within a year of being retired and has held that price consistently ever since. And from what I've seen, a lot of the value comes from any mini figures that are included in a set and the Sydney Opera House didn't include any, which means it may not have been an ideal kit to have been investing in in the first place. None of this, of course, is investment advice. It's just a little bit of midweek entertainment. So I went to the Lego website, had a look around and quite quickly found something that I thought would be just about perfect. A Lego Great Pyramid. Now three things attracted me to this set, although it doesn't include any minifigs, so it's probably not a great candidate for investment. Now firstly, I've been to Cairo three times and the pyramids are amazing. They're nearly 5,000 years old and their impact today is still amazing. The second thing is that the set isn't huge. It's got just under 1,500 pieces. So it's not a trivial build, but it is quite a lot smaller than some of the biggest sets that are available. And thirdly, when it is built, it doesn't really look like it's made of Lego. So this set cost me £120, which is about eight pence per piece. And that's almost exactly the same pence per piece as that Sydney Opera House set. It's a little more per piece than the Lego Titanic set, which charges you six and a half P for each of the 9,090 pieces. That's a £590 set to buy and Lego can be really quite expensive. But by making a video about buying this set, I can reclaim my VAT and I can deduct the remaining cost against tax. So it's not all bad. 
So you open the box and you get a number of bags, all numbered with pieces for each stage of the build. And you get an instruction book. And the book is 175 pages long and contains every step of the build process from brick one to brick 1476. So let's adjourn to a building station and get stuck in. So the box contained bags numbered from one to eight, although some of the bags had the same number. So in total, there were 13 bags spread across eight stages. So the build and the instruction book had a few pages of preamble to warm you up, but it was quickly time to open bag number one and to also open bag number other one. And the first pieces came together. So bag one produces the base of the set and I started to realize how much of the detail actually gets consumed into the set and isn't really visible in the finished display. It was really interesting how the layers built up and you end up with an extremely sturdy frame even though no individual piece is that large. Bag two was again doubled up and almost every bag had a sub bag containing the smallest, fiddliest bits. For this bag, I started assembling the pieces needed for each stage of the instructions to make absolutely certain I didn't miss any bits. The instructions are very clear, but if you try and rush, it is possible to miss a piece here or there. But by the end of bag two, the base was substantially complete. You'll notice that bag two contains the first spare piece. Bag three completed the base and had quite a few fun bits, including three little sphinxes. Nine individual bricks make up each one of these, which gives you an idea of how fiddly it can get. Bag four was small, but probably was the most challenging as it contained two subsidiary bags of fiddly bits, these turned into lots of bits of desert foliage, which looked pretty good and were worth the fiddle. Plus two pyramids for the Sphinx's family and the funerary temple where the body was prepared for burial. Quite a few spare bits by this stage, but they were all duplicates of smaller fiddly bits that are easily lost or swallowed. Bags five and five bring you to the pyramid itself or to the interior of it at least. Again, it was fascinating to see how solidly built this section ended up being with lots of cross bracing within the structure that you will not see on the finished display. You actually only get half a pyramid in this set, but you can buy a second set which backs onto this one to make a full pyramid. This side shows a representation of how many people feel the pyramid was constructed. And offering half a pyramid gives Lego the opportunity to show a cross section of the pyramid on the back side, which quite accurately shows the interior chambers of the actual Great Pyramid. Bag six looked small, but had an awful lot of small bits, which took a while. But this finished the interior part of the pyramid and included the fiddliest bit of all, which was this winch mechanism, which rounded out the representation of how the pyramid was built. Bags seven, other bag seven, and most of bag eight and other bag eight contained what you needed to build the exterior casing of the pyramid. Again, really interesting to see how sturdy this part ended up being, although there was a level of repetition as you build up the steps. But you build your way up to the capstone or the pyramidion as it should be properly called. This piece is long disappeared from the real pyramid, meaning it's now eight meters shorter than it was when it was built. Indeed, almost all of the original casing is missing from the Great Pyramid of Giza, although you can still see some on the slightly smaller Pyramid of Khafre next door. And here's the point I made earlier about this not really looking like Lego, as there's no knobbly bits showing in the finished article. A few bits of bag eight were left, which built the obelisk that Lego has decided to position right out front of the pyramid, plus two boats that it's believed were used to bring the stones to the site. Archaeologists now believe a branch of the Nile ran right up to the Giza Plateau, which probably explains why the site was chosen for these monuments, even if the Nile is a long way away these days. And here you go. 
The funerary temple is at the front by the river, behind which is the causeway along which the pharaoh would have been conveyed up to the pyramid itself, lined with mini sphinxes. Behind which are two of the queen's pyramids. There's tiny sarcophagi built into these, which is a nice touch. On the other side is a representation of a worker's village, which would have been located close to the pyramid during its construction. And the pyramid itself, which I think looks fantastic. And the casing comes off really quite easily to reveal those workings, a representation of how it was probably built, rather than a reflection of the historical record, let's say. And the reverse shows the interior passages and chambers, with the pharaoh's sarcophagus in the middle there. And that cross-section remains visible when the casing is reattached. It's a little easier if you're not holding a camera in your dominant hand. Those two crosses in the bottom there are where you can attach the second half if you want to display an entire pyramid and can afford a second set. I'm really, really pleased with it. It was great fun to build and it was very satisfying to build too. The Lego itself is really high quality, the pieces fit together beautifully, and it's such a rewarding sensation when the pieces join together. I took my time with this build, and it probably took me about five hours, I'm sure others will do it quicker, but I took my time over it to really understand how the piece was coming together. And for me, not having built any Lego for probably 40 years, that was really part of the fun. And it is spectacularly sturdy, and it is surprisingly heavy. So it's built and it fits nicely into the space I have prepared for it. But having really enjoyed the build process, it is now very, very tempting to dismantle it and build it again. Which I believe most people do, particularly if they don't have the space to permanently display their sets. Dismantling it would be a non-trivial exercise on the one or 20 occasions when I made a mistake when I was building it. It was quite tricky to get the pieces apart to fix my error. Lego gives you a tool to assist with disassembly, but I really didn't find it that useful. A pen knife was far more handy for me, although you have to be very, very careful if you are disassembling using a blade. And if you do break it down, you would have to do so in a very, very structured way, pretty much section by section, so you can line the pieces back up again with the instructions when you come to rebuild it. If you don't do this, you'll just end up with a heap of 1500 Lego pieces, which will make it much, much, much more difficult to get the right pieces you need at each stage of the rebuild process. And I did actually get 1500 pieces, as at the end I had 25 little bits left over. I probably will break this down and rebuild it at some point, but I expect I'll wait until a miserable, rainy winter's day. I want to finish by talking a little bit more about the £120 that this cost me. How LEGO designs and builds these sets is really impressive. I said in the intro that this is 1,500 pieces at 8p each, but having built it, that's really only part of the story. To design and build this set must have been a massive project that would have taken a lot of time. I don't know, but I expect that a few of the pieces would have needed to have been designed and fabricated specifically for this set, which again takes time and money. The instruction book is 176 pages long, and it must have been a right pain to design and produce it. And getting the right pieces into each of the 13 individual bags is a non-trivial exercise. No pieces were missing, and I actually ended up with 25 extra bits. So having built this, and having spent quite some time now analysing what LEGO had to do to produce and distribute this set, my only rational conclusion is that it is exceptional value for money. Now if you can't reclaim the VAT, you still aren't really paying £120. I bought this through the LEGO website and earned LEGO Insider points. You get eight per pound spent. So this earned me 960 points, which is good enough for a six, maybe seven pound discount on a future purchase. And by purchasing direct from Lego, they will generally include a gift with purchase. This set alone wasn't quite enough to trigger that gift. So I spent an extra 20 quid on this jungle explorer plane, which was great fun to build. And that was enough to trigger this gift with purchase, a Jules Verne book tribute set. I have resisted opening this and building it, which let me tell you has been difficult, but it is now out of stock and you're already starting to see it pop up on reseller websites for £30. 
So taking these two elements of added value into account, the net price that I paid was only around 85 quid, which really, really is exceptional value for money. Now I'm very tempted to keep this sealed and unopened and see what happens to the aftermarket price of it, although I'm already getting withdrawal symptoms having built this, and the temptation to rip into this and build it as well is significant. So there you go. I really enjoyed building that set and I've really enjoyed making this video too. It's something that's quite different from my normal content. And hopefully you've enjoyed watching this. Please leave me a like and leave me a comment too. That will let me know if this sort of content works and if it does, I'll be sorely tempted to go out and buy another kit so I can make another video. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.